in Austin, Texas at South by Southwest. This is rare at this point of the night to see you and me in the same place. Because I gotta admit, there's still that competition. You go the opposite way when you see me coming. I mean, we ate dinner together. Well, it's not a good thing for us to be seeing the same things. I mean, right. there's 2,000 bands. 2,000 bands, right. You know, and it's kind of disappointing, even if we love the show, that we both wound up in the same. All right, so what, I don't have no idea. What was your highlight so far Wednesday? So far, P.S. I Love You is the best band I've seen. I, we that actually was got here Tuesday. <laughs> so I'm talking about the first two days. I'm talking about the Your first highlight two days. Wednesday happened on Tuesday. And, and he played again today, so I heard him twice. Oh, all right, right, all right, all right. P.S. I Love You, do a lot of Canada. Yeah. Fantastic guitar, guitar and drums, straight up. The guy is he's kind of bringing a guitar solo back in two or three minute songs. I mean, the guy is the best new guitar player I've seen in two or three years. All right. Fantastic, great melodic pop songs. How about you? I gotta say that I think the single best thing I've seen so far, and I've seen a lot of good music already, uh, was this band I just came out of, The Bewitched Hands. It used to be The Bewitched Hands on the top of our heads. <laughs> this sextet from Reims in France. Uh, you know, they've traveled halfway around the world. Six pieces, keyboard, drums, guitars, percussion, uh, and it's just this wonderful mix of things I love, all right? A little bit of that stereo lap, pop, 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 wordless vocal thing, right? They got the feelies rhythm, yeah, circle yeah. the good earth. They got those rousing guitars of like Arcade Fire when they were in anthem mode, and they got those pop hooks that the new pornographers have. That's like a laundry list or a formula. That's not why I like them. I like them because they have these great songs, and they use all these bits and pieces of pop tools, and they just deliver. And they, they play to maybe 200 people, half of whom I think they knew, because it was the French showcase. <laughs> Somebody from France had brought champagne yeah. from Champagne, okay, like the real stuff, and I didn't imbibe, I was you know, working. Uh, but I, that's the kind of thing, you know, who is gonna expect to come to Austin to see a band from France that, that, you know, I don't know if they'll ever get here again, but it was an amazing experience. Well, that's what, what the great thing about this festival is, they do bring bands in from all over the world, and that's, uh, that's a rare thing. Some of these bands may never tour the U.S. again. Yeah, why would you come here and go see the Foo Fighters? <laughs> why would you do that? Well, I don't understand that. should be pointed out, the Strokes, the Foo Fighters, uh, Kanye Duran, West. Duran, Duran. Duran, Duran are playing big showcases here, so there is that message of the big industry still here. Duran, Duran, Duran will be playing a summer shed yeah. brought to you by Live Nation in a couple of months. Don't come to Texas. Yeah to see that. The real reason is to see something new, something that's going to surprise you. I did go to see James Blake, as a lot of people were talking about Big it. Height. I needed to get that out of my system. I'm glad I saw it. 20 minutes of that was plenty. I needed to get out of there. It was kind of dull, kind of sleepy. I, I attended a panel yeah. today that had scientifically quantified by number of blog mentions and positive blog reviews the biggest buzzes of this festival. James Blake by far was number one. But I can't get excited to see in a bar in Texas a guy who grants in interviews. People sitting at home at their computers love my music because that's how I make it. I sit at home in front of my computer. That's where he should have been. He shouldn't have been in a big outdoor <laughs> venue like Stubbs. And I gotta say, Jamie Liddell did it all better five, ten years ago. Yeah, it's been done. And well, the Apex Twin did it better twenty years ago. All right. Sure. But it was great to walk out of James Blake and right into the set by this band, The Back Scenes from the yeah. UK. And this is why we come to South by Southwest, to be surprised by something you really didn't know it was going to be any good or not. Yeah. They came up there, they played 20 minutes, six songs, blew our heads off. You know, you know how certain bands have that, that, that British swagger, especially yeah. a lot of American bands are kind of shy, kind of self-effacing. These guys walk on stage like, they they're going to they're, they're gonna, they're gonna run you over. Yeah. And that's exactly what these guys did. Six songs, bang. 20 minutes. I wish every set could be that good, that concise, that that powerful. Well, there should be a law. I don't think bands should ever play them. Also, I, I just love the idea of we traveled halfway around the world with all of our equipment and dealt with customs and the money that, and to play you six songs. Now I gotta go see them. You do absolutely. Cod with Sound Opinions here in Austin, Texas, day three of the South by Southwest Music Conference. Uh, you'll notice that my cohort, Jim DeRogatis, is not here. The last I saw, Jim was getting into a boogie van with a stone rock band with shag carpeting, uh, wallet chains, and uh, a, a giant, I think it looked like a bomb in the back seat. I'm not sure, but he was climbing into that van. Perhaps, maybe on the other hand, he was exhausted because that's what Bob Geldof said he was earlier this morning. He saw that America was exhausted. Maybe Jim DeRogatis is exhausted too, I don't know. But Geldof's point earlier this morning at the keynote address was that America 
is losing its vibe, it's losing its rock and roll currency, it needs to be re-energized. I think he and Jim should hang out with me more often. Uh, go see some shows, uh, see two wonderful bands that I saw tonight, Glasser and Tune Yards. Glasser, this amazing quartet, it was kind of channeling a dead can dance chamber pop vibe with sort of a Bjork twitchiness that worked just wonderfully at the Central Presbyterian Church, which is easily my favorite venue in Austin, Texas these days. And then Tune Yards, this band that completely dispensed with all the indie rock cliches, no mopey guys playing downcast guitars. It was about this joyous, rapturous West African vibe uh, combined with scronky saxophones and the singer who was uh, doing the soul R&B thing very convincingly on the vocals. So to Jim DeRogatis, Bye bye in your boogie van. Bob Geldof, we are not exhausted. We are still going strong here in day three, South by Southwest. We'll see you tomorrow for more. Hi, I'm Jim DeRogatis. And I'm Greg Cott, and we're here at the South by Southwest Music Conference in Austin, Texas, day four. Now, wait, wait a minute. We are actually right here, right at this moment now, as a history buff, and I know yeah. you are as well. In our in our other life, besides being right, you know what this is? This is this is the house, right? <laughs> After the fall of the Alamo, the only Anglo survivor was the widow of Colonel Dickinson, yes. who was killed with all the uh, other defenders of the Alamo garrison. She came here and lived the rest of her life with, with her child. They both survived the assault on the Alamo. Here, in this house. And this is actually where Ben Weasel is hiding no, no, right now. I don't, I, don't, no, I wouldn't want to. Yeah, I just came from this Screeching Weasel gang. Uh, Screeching Weasel, the legendary godfathers of the pop punk revival. I mean, the line between Ramones and, you know, Green Day, Screeching Weasel's in the middle. Chicagoans, a legacy act, if you will, playing a rare reunion gig in, in, in Texas. Uh, it, was fast, it was a great gig. But Ben spent half of the gig haranguing the audience. I can't believe you suckers paid to be here, this <laughs> festival. You know, with language I can't repeat. What, what got him uh, upset? Why was he, he was, so He was agitated. making only $250, and usually Screeching Weasel can make 40 grand a night, he claims. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they told him he had to do this because it was good for his career. Uh. Here's how good it was for his career. Somebody at the end of the set, because he was talking so much, threw a beer in his face and he wanted to find out who it was. He was going to threaten this person. Mm -hmm. Turns out to have been a girl. And then he starts ranking on her and she throws an ice cube and hits him in the eye. He jumps in the crowd and punches her in the face. This is how the show ended. It was metallic KO yeah. with the students, yeah. oh, right? Man, He's hauled off, you know, tears out of there. The Texas police are coming. These security guards, right? Yeah. Big Texas men want to beat well, they, were, they don't want to be nice to him, I'll put it that yeah. way. And, and uh, what a punk rock moment. That's you know? and, and he had just ended the set singing, there's a real cool club, and you're not part of it. <laughs> that was for oh sure. My God. What did you see tonight? I don't think I got any stories to top that one. That is like one of the old time South by Southwest music stories. This is going in the book. They just put out the 25th anniversary book. The next book is going to have yeah, this that's story. Yeah, be on the cover, no doubt yeah. about it. Uh, I don't know. Can we do any better on day five of South by Southwest? But, uh, I didn't even get to tell you about my stone and rock kidnapping. Yeah, well, that's, that'll be for tomorrow. That'll be for our book. It only seems to happen at 3 or 4 a.m. Some blurry hat for a picture of some half forgotten friend. Becomes clear, but I can't hold it. Greg Cott here reporting from the South by Southwest Music Conference in Austin, Texas. Day five it is just about over here. Uh, we saw some wonderful music once again today, and there's still a few hours more left. But tonight's big revelation was the 12-piece uh, band out of Portland, Typhoon. Don't know how these guys do. What, what is the overhead on touring a 12-piece band around the country, let alone coming all the way from Portland uh, to play the uh, South by Southwest Music Conference in Austin, Texas? I don't know what it is, but I'm glad I saw their 40-minute set tonight, which is wonderful orchestrated music. We've got strings on one side, brass on the other, this dynamic front man in the middle, Acapella singing, beautiful crescendos. Uh, what a wonderful uh, evening of music they provided, and a wonderful week of uh, music here in Austin, Texas. And two big revelations for me 
overall. P.S. I love you. Uh, the great uh, band out of Canada, just a two-piece, great guitar player. And the other band I saw, uh, the new project from uh, Two Thirds of Sleater Kinney, Janet Weiss, and Carrie Brownstein, a band called Wild Flag. Uh, just blew me away. That is the performance I am going to carry forward with me throughout the rest of 2011. Can't wait for 2012 at the South by Southwest next year.